Hey everybody, in this video, we are going to factor a polynomial expression. Most specifically, we are factoring a quadratic trinomial. We are also specifically factoring a quadratic trinomial where the a is not equal to one. Unfortunately, in a lot of Algebra One courses, teachers primarily focus on teaching students how to factor quadratic trinomials where a is one and they focus on teaching a specific method that only works when A is one, and then students try to apply the same method when A is not one and make a mess. It doesn't work, they don't understand why, and they never stop to learn. So hopefully if you're here right now, you're with it and you're gonna know that you can't use certain shortcuts and you gotta do it the real way. So I'm gonna go through doing this two ways. The first way is going to be the more formal um, and long uh, worked out way. And the other one is gonna be a little bit like of a hack, cheaper shortcut way, but still legitimate, such as, so long as you are getting the right answer. So if you are the type to make careless mistakes, sometimes it's almost better to do it the long way, especially for an open-ended assessment question, you're probably gonna get more credit or catch your own mistakes. So. Let's dive in. So we're dealing with a quadratic trinomial. Quadratics are recognized as being of the following form. So that's a quadratic expression, not to be confused with a quadratic equation. So right there we have a quadratic expression. Also, some of you like to be a little quirky with your handwriting and use random capital letters in places. You really shouldn't. If the formal way to write it is with lowercase letters, you should also do the same. So not the time to jazz things up, okay? So A, I mentioned before, when A is one, factoring is a little bit easier. Here, <clears throat> A is equal to two. We're going to apply something called the AC method with grouping. That means we're going to multiply A and C to start. A is equal to 2, not 2x squared, 2. B is equal to negative 5, not negative 5x, just negative 5. And C is equal to negative 3. If your expression's not in standard form, you have to put it in standard form first. A is always in front of x squared, B is always in front of x, and C is always the constant by itself. If I multiply A times C, I'm really multiplying 2 times negative 3, which means that my AC value is negative 6. Then I'm going to find pairs of factors, factor pairs. There's a difference between finding factors of something. That's just a list of numbers that will evenly divide into a number or expression versus finding factor pairs. That means groups of two, like a pair of shoes, right? Factor pairs would be like 1 and 6 two and three, and that's it really. So I'm listing my factor pairs, get to the bottom of the list, and I'm gonna address that the bottom number is negative five B. Now this one's a sneaky example. We like these sneaky examples because I could really make a five out of both one and six and two and three. So this one's got a little sneakeroo moves in it. What is going to be the deal breaker? Because you might think, oh, either one works. Not true. I need it to multiply to be negative. That means when all is said and done, you will have a positive and negative, one of each. You will not have two positives. A positive times a positive is positive, and you will not have two negatives. A negative times a negative is negative. So we will have one of each. <clears throat> if we have one of each, and they add, slash subtract, same idea, to give me negative five, that means the bigger of the two numbers, when you deal in absolute values, is positive, or I'm sorry, the bigger of the two, I'm backwards, is negative. So it's like your dominant trait gets passed on to a little baby B. Negative five, it picked up the dominant trait, so the bigger number is gonna be negative. If baby B over here is positive five, then the dominant gene, the bigger gene was positive. If that resonates with you, because you like Punnett squares, you're welcome. So I want one of each. If I wanted negative five with two and three, they would both be negative, so that's out. You can't pick that one, all right? And next time it might be the opposite way, so pay attention. So I need, in this case, positive one and negative six. Double, triple, check yourself. Stop thinking it doesn't matter which one's positive or negative and just moving on and then like fudging it and forcing it. You're not fooling anybody, it's wrong, okay? It's just wrong, just give it some thought, okay? 
So what are these numbers that we just found? We have a positive one and we have negative six. Well, I'm glad you asked. We are dealing with the first times first right there with the two X squared. We are dealing with the last times last when it comes to the negative three. I hope you know what I'm talking about is from the FOIL problem, right? You have your two parentheses, you have a binomial, binomial when you multiply, we do first times first, um, outer, inner, and last. So I'm just gonna grab a couple colors. Let's do a little demonstration. So, first times first came from doing first times first, right? O is outer. <clears throat> so I don't have that right now, but the O would be the outer, which is those two. They're on the outer part of my um, setup right here. So that was the O, right? And then first, kind of see that? Yep. And then we can have our inner, which will be this times this. That's the inner, outer, inner, outer, inner, right? And then we have um, the last times the last, that right there, and that is where that guy comes from. All right, so that's the last times last. But we don't have <clears throat> two terms right now. We have just negative five. Well, what's negative five, you may be asking? Well, negative five is what happens when the outer and the inner come together and combine. And that makes us a middle term. So F, M, L, and we're gonna split the M so that we no longer have to deal with F, M, L, and we'll just have an OI in the middle instead of an F, M, L, and then we can work backwards with grouping, amazing, and get it all factored. So that's what that plus one and minus six do. So let's go ahead. Sorry, I'm losing my stuff. So first is gonna stay two x squared, two x squared. The middle's gonna split one plus one, leave a little minute, minus six, leave a little second right there, and then the minus three stays. Now, <clears throat> Whatever the, in order for this to be a quadratic type, the power on your A has to be double the power on your B. That X has an invisible one. This could be a four and a two. This could be a 10 and a five. This could be 150. This could be, you know, 260 and 130. As long as this power is double that power, you're good. Now, when you split the middle, whatever numbers you use, you're going to give them whatever the middle guy has. So if this has X, they both get X. If this has X squared, they both get X squared. That's a top spot for mistakes. Don't be a mistake maker, but it's okay. We all make mistakes. So there's my minus three that came from my last times last. And like we said, we're gonna put the X so plus one X and minus six X for my um, outer and inner going on right over here. So my inner is the minus in this case. It, does the order of these two terms matter, the plus one X and the minus six X? No, but whenever I do it, I will always put the number that I always write my smaller absolute value number on the left when I make my list, and then I will just transfer it over in the same order. I'm not gonna switch that up. So I'm gonna leave that the same for consistency. Um, and consistency is definitely, if you're a struggling math student, being consistent is a game changer for people. If you become very consistent, routine, do problems the same way every time, you're probably going to improve a lot. So you don't have to be bad at math. Like no one's forcing you to be bad. Figure out your consistent routine and commit to it, you know? So from here, I have my four terms, and this is where we pick up with factoring by grouping. Your greatest common factor here is just X, and your greatest common factor here, you have to use the leading term sign, so it's negative three. I'm dividing out the X, but you also multiply by it to keep the balance. Dividing out negative three, you multiply out front by it to keep the balance. 
To figure out what goes inside, we use our handy dandy pretzel. 2x squared divided by x is 2x. 1x, the 1 doesn't really need to be there, divided by x is just 1. The 1 does come a little handy. Negative 6x divided by negative 3 is 2x. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is plus 1. Now, if those two parentheses match, if you pick the wrong pair of numbers, if you used 2 and 3, there's a very good chance that you might not catch it. But what, like for instance, one parenthesis might be 2x plus 1, and the other one would be like 2x minus 1. And you might automatically write it out as matching because you want them to be the same and you're used to them being the same and you're not even going to catch it. But that's a great way to figure out that you picked the wrong pair of numbers by accident. So make sure you're not making assumptions and that you're working that out, you know? You're welcome for that tip. Now those are the same. That gets undistributed. We're pulling it all the way out front. So we write it once. You don't swear it. It's There's one of them. That's it. Now if that gets pulled out front, what is left inside? Just x minus 3. The greatest power is 2. It's an expression. We're factoring. You're not solving. There's no equal sign. The greatest power is 2, so you're likely to have two sets of parentheses when it is factored. It is possible to have fewer, or it is possible to have a quadratic trinomial that's not factorable. If it's an expression that you're asked to factor and you can't factor it, you would just put down that it's prime, not factorable. If the only thing you could do is factor out a two or a negative, you just do that and you're done. But if it were a solving question and it's not factorable, what do you do? Right, use the quadratic formula. I feel like I'm on like a children's show, but you get the gist. So I hope that helped you. If you wanted to double check it and you're turning in an assignment, I would FOIL, multiply it back out, in fact, do it right now. If maybe you don't understand the connection, like why your teacher tells you to FOIL, just do it right now. Do it right now and watch what happens. If you don't get it and you're just like, I'm a math robot for my teacher, I don't know why I'm doing this, try it, okay? Um, click through for the next example when you're done. And if you feel like you can get something like this right on your own in the future, thumbs up. If you think you're going to get it wrong, give me a thumbs down. And I will see you later. Adios.